Good morning, good morning, good morning, friends and family. Thank you so much for joining us for another beautiful, beautiful day. We're for New Covenant Christian Center, our online virtual service. Well, we are thanking God for the opportunity to come meet you directly in your home. So thank you, thank you for everybody who's been tuning in, who's been joining us. We are so thankful that you guys have been participating with us on these beautiful Sundays, okay? Now, today is a very, very special Sunday because it's gonna be our communion Sunday, okay? So I just wanna give everybody a heads up to be prepared. Um, if you have your sacraments ready, we are gonna be celebrating communion Sunday today, okay? All right. Now here at Renew Coming to Christian Center, we have the great, great leadership of Pastor Emmanuel and Pastor Carla Holland, where I personally are thanking them for giving me an opportunity to be a part of something larger, than myself, to giving me an opportunity of being part of something larger than myself. So I actually want to use that to go into what Pastor Manuel has been preaching on. Now, the, the series that we're in, which is going to be our conclusion today, is going to be Kingdom Vision. Kingdom Vision, not your friend's vision, not your parents' vision, not your vision, not the world's vision, not human's vision, but kingdom vision, kingdom vision, which is such, it is such a beautiful thing. And you know you're working with kingdom vision because God's vision will always be larger than your own life, larger than the life of the friends around you. And so I thank the pastors for giving me an opportunity to be a part of a vision larger than my own. It's beautiful and it has truly changed my life the moment that I start stopped putting faith in my own vision and I started having the faith to put in vision beyond my own sight. It, it is truly a beautiful thing, okay? So I really want you guys to pay attention, to take notes and to really truly absorb some of the good messages that is coming from Pastor Holland, okay? Now, if you're not connected with our uh, ministry, um, a part of the YouTube post and the Facebook post, there is an online connect form. Please fill out the online connect form so that you can get connected with us so that you can start to be a part of a vision larger than your own, okay? Now, another beautiful thing on Wednesday night, Wednesday night is our Bible study. Wednesday night is the best opportunity to actually learn, to educate yourself, to grow. On Sundays, we can watch, we can spectate, but on Wednesday, it is a perfect opportunity for you to ask questions and to really get connected with uh, Pastor Carla. She has really been helping us understand the Bible beyond surface, beyond what you may think it is. And so she's really breaking down the Bible and giving us a lot of great nuggets. So please, please, if you can, join us on Wednesday, okay? Now, other than that, um, thank you guys for joining us on Sunday. Please pass this message, this video forward to somebody else. You never know who it may, um, may affect or change in their life. So we truly want to thank you guys for being a part of the service and continue to join us, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you who has decided to fellowship with us on today. Our media ministry lead has gotten us on the right track and started us and we thank and praise God for him as well, for his faithfulness, for helping us serve God the way that we do in the vision that he has blessed us with. As he stated, we are going to prepare for communion this morning. So please get your sacraments ready. If you do not already have them, go ahead and get your sacraments ready on this morning. And as you're preparing um, to get your sacraments, go ahead and get in the mindset of what communion means to you, why we do it, why it should be considered a, a celebration but also a time to provoke thought for what Christ has done for us. So as we are preparing for that, let us go ahead and invoke the presence of the Lord. Father God, we do thank you and we do praise you, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask that you 
Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us of anything that was done, said, or thought, not pleasing into your sight or contrary to your word, Lord God. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that you are giving us yet another opportunity to get it right with you, to have a clean slate with you, Father. Father God, we bless you in our places, God, and we ask that you anoint them afresh from the roof to the very foundation, Lord God, anoint our spaces, workspaces, living spaces, Lord God, study spaces. Father, even those who are traveling, Father, we thank you right now that you will anoint their traveling spaces as well, God. Father, we thank you for your ministry and angels that are encamped about us at all times, standing guard and on watch, on post. And Father, we thank you thought of us just enough for us to be a little lower than them. Um, yes, a little lower than them so that we can have that divine protection in place, God. Father, we thank you that even in the smallest things in our lives, God, you want to be a part of it. You want to be a part of every area of our lives. And Father, I thank you right now that you will open new eyes, open ears and hearts on today, God, to receive from you like never before God. Father, I thank you right now that you will break chains, that you will break up fallow ground so that when the seed is thrown, God, it can be sown. Father, do not let any of our seed fall onto stony, rocky ground, God, but Father, allow it to reach the fertile soils, God, so that it can multiply, God. Father, we thank you for our pastor, for the word that is going forth, God. Father, we thank you right now that everyone is in the space to receive from you on today. Allow this life application teaching word, Lord God, to help us on our daily assignment. Father, we thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that will come and be imparted to us on today. Father, it is in your son's Jesus name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we're getting prepared for our scripture, hopefully you have your sacraments ready. Hopefully you have your sacraments ready. And we're going to go ahead and do our scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23. Yes, 23 to 34. And I'm going to be reading the King James Version. First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. And the word of the Lord reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the word the Lord's death till the till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many of you sleep. For if we could judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye should come together to eat, to eat, tarry one for another. And if me, any man hunger, let him eat at home. And ye come not together into condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. This morning, 
be mindful that, like the word says, tarry ye one for another. So when you're taking communion this morning, be mindful of those that you know who need healing, salvation, and restoration, along with deliverance. I have read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor Carl, for the scripture um, that we uh, read um, on every Communion Sunday, which is the first Sunday I'm excited about. Communion Sunday, um, this is something that we do um, according to the scriptures. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ um, reminded uh, what he stated during the Last Supper. He said, do this often and do it in remembrance of him. And so that's why we do what we do on today. There are many different other beliefs, many uh, different uh uh, walks of life, but as a Christian, as a believer, we have been um, commissioned to do this. And so um, this should make sure that we're all on the same page on one accord, just as the disciples turned apostles uh, were doing in the upper room. And so I'm going to pray a prayer of forgiveness and also pray um, for the sacraments. I hope Hopefully you've had an opportunity to um, gather those um, those items that we, um, you know, that we eat and drink um, on every communion Sunday, which is first Sunday here at RC3. I also want to uh, thank those that are watching. Um, I also am able to see the good mornings and the warm welcomes. And I thank um, Daryl Stiles Jr. for um, that welcome. Um, it, it starts us off well. And I also want to thank him for the work that he does behind the scenes and, and pulling everything together with the notes and um, all of the animations and, and so on and so forth. We wouldn't be able to do some of the things that we do without him, as well as the, uh, our supporters um, here at RC3. And so, again, if you have, you haven't, hopefully you've had enough time to grab your sacraments as um, Brother Darrell. Um, suggested uh, we are going to pray a prayer of forgiveness and we will also bless the sacraments but we want to make sure that we do it all on one accord before we eat and drink but we want to make sure that we do it together and so please uh, go with me as I pray a prayer of forgiveness and this forgiveness is, is very important um, without grace and mercy uh, we all will be in a pickle uh, we will be in a an unfortunate situation and so we need to make sure that we pray for new grace and new mercy every day um, I know I certainly need it father we come before you right now asking that you forgive us Lord for our sins sins of omission and commission father that things that we uh, may be not proud of the things the thoughts that we may not be proud of God the things that we may have said um, that are not good. Father, I pray right now that you forgive us of our sin. Please wipe our slate clean. Give us a new start. Give us a clean heart. Give us a fresh start. Because, Father, without that fresh start, um, some of us, Lord, would not be in a good place. And so I ask, Lord, that you be with us on today as we ask for forgiveness um, before we participate and partake in Holy Communion. Because, Lord, we're all unworthy. We are as filthy rags. But, God, with you, we are clean. Because, Lord, your blood is what cleanses us. It was, it's what washes us. God, I thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. The blood that um, represents redemption. It represents uh, grace. It represents mercy. It represents uh, multiple opportunities to get things right in which we uh, are not perfect. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, that we not cast judgment on one another. But, Lord, we um, pray for one another that we are strengthening uh, each other with the prayers because you said the prayers of the righteous avail as much and so we thank you for the prayers of the righteous as a matter of fact you see the um, the fervent prayers of the righteous the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much and so we thank you right now God I ask that you allow us Lord to um, let, let, us, let us bless the sacraments Father I thank you God that we uh, we are standing before you today we ask Lord that you allow us to look at the sacraments for what it represents, which is 
the wafer represents your body, which was bruised and wounded for our iniquity, that seen and unseen sin. God, I thank you, Lord, for the uh, the body that was broken, Lord God, the body that was broken and sacrificed on our behalf. Uh, Lord, not only for the body that was broken and sacrificed for our behalf, but we thank you, God, that uh, help us to see um, the the juice uh, as your blood, the blood that was shed at Calvary, because without the blood, there will be no redemption. Without the blood, there will be no grace. Without the blood, there will be no mercy. And so we thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed at Calvary, the Lord, the blood that gives us strength, just as the songwriters say, from day to day, that it will never lose its power. So we thank you for that redemption power in our lives, God, that which we, uh, it seems or appears that we have gone into a dead end. We thank you, God, that you have opened doors for us that no man can open and closed doors that no man can close. Lord, we thank you, God, that we are all on one accord as we understand that there are many uh, members, but there's one body, the body of Jesus Christ. As we celebrate uh, what was done for us over 2,000 years ago, we dare not forget the whole purpose and reasoning for that redemption because we know, Father, that Adam uh, failed and uh, along with a whole lot of other people but because of the perfect walk of Christ that we have an example as to how we should live our lives, who and what we should pattern our lives after. Father, we really we understand, God, that uh, this flesh, there's no good thing in this flesh. Help us, God, to be able to withstand temptation within ourselves, not so much as what others do, but within ourselves. Father, the struggle that we have within ourselves. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. And so if you have your sacraments, now will be the time for you to grab it and get ready to participate in something that that bonds us together. Um, just as the scripture said, as Paul so eloquently stated. That we should do it. And do it often in remembrance of Christ. This is something that we do every first Sunday here at RC3. You may eat. And you may drink. You know, there are some clergy that um, call this sacrificial Sunday. And so I, I am in agreement with that because it is a sacrificial Sunday where we honor the sacrifice that was made on our behalf when yet we had not been born. But I thank God for the saving power of Jesus Christ. saving power that gives us an opportunity to do things over again. Amen. I want to go ahead and get right into the word. I know normally communion Sundays are normally long. Uh, so I'm going to spare you today. Instead of having three points, I'm going to have two. <laughs> so, um, Our media ministry lead engineer was correct that this is the conclusion of the Kingdom Vision series. And so I pray that it's been a blessing unto you. Um, I've gotten some good feedback from, from some people that have reached out in the um, gave some kind words um, to, to some of the messages that I've been preaching, teaching in this series. 
and and I thank God for that feedback. You know, when you are in a virtual service, you can't see the eyes of people. You can't read the body uh, language or posture. So you have to preach as if you are preaching in front of 3000 people. But I thank God for the Internet that we're able to continue on in service. Uh, despite some of the ups and downs that uh, we may have experienced in this crazy society when it comes to uh, health and wellness. And so I pray that everyone has, has been well um, during this tumultuous time. I pray that everyone has found a way to stay safe um, and not just COVID free, but monkeypox free. Um, there's something else now that is uh, seem to be, I call it plague, something that seemed to be plaguing um, the people now. And so I pray that everyone is prepared, that they are practicing social distancing and uh, making sure that they honor uh, the social distancing um, uh, notices and standards that have been set forth by the Department of Health and Human Services, um, the CDC and all of those other uh, entities, the entities that uh, create the rules that uh, that make sure that we are following to keep us all safe. And so, um, uh, again, this is the conclusion of the Kingdom Vision series. I am excited about it because um, as I reflect on some of the things that I've been writing um, and, and, and I've been studying, um, I, I believe I need to put some uh, pen to paper and start um, writing a, a book or something, something that will capture these moments. And because obviously um, it's the, these words are touching somebody. And so I need to make sure that I record them. I have them all here in my iPad notes, but we all know that if something was to happen to this iPad, I wouldn't be able to get this information or data off of it. You know, a lot of people put their confidence and their faith in iCloud, but I don't. <laughs> um, I know that anything that is man-made can um, fail. But I thank God for um, technology. Um, uh, well, let me go ahead and take us back to the top of um, the series. And I've broken it down into um, three different subtitles. And those subtitles, um, one of them is everyone is not privileged to your view. And, um, and you know, looking at Ezekiel um, 37 verses 1 through 14, we look at um, what happened with Ezekiel, that he was able to, uh, the Lord, the hand of the Lord, according to uh, Ezekiel 31 and 7, it says, the hand of the Lord um, was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And so even though it may have only appeared to be bones, um, the hand of the Lord was on Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel being a major prophet. The hand of the Lord was upon him. And so when the hand of the Lord is upon you, everyone's not privileged to your view. You see things that other people don't see because God is allowing you um, to have his vision. Um, and there's some people that need to be able to have the vision of the Lord because um, we live in a society in a, in a day and age to where there's a lot of negativity. Um, um, that if you turn on your television, if you look through your social media feeds, and if you um, just simply have a conversation with someone, it just... It's so much going on right now, and especially, um, you know, with, with politics and um, it, it's just so much out there. But anyway, I want to make sure that we understand that everyone is not privileged to your view. Um, if God is showing you something, then hey, it's a blessing because not everyone is able to see what you see. And so um, the second message or the subtitle was Focus Your Lens. Um, there are times where um, I actually gave an example of 
Um, when I wake up, my eyesight is not what it should be. Um, it takes me a few minutes um, to be able to actually see what I need to see, but I have to make the adjustments. I have to, um, when I get up, I have to, um, I have two clocks that I look at and both of them are blurry. I can't see the time. Um, it takes me a, a, a couple of minutes to be able to focus um, my vision, uh, my lens, <laughs> my eyes to be able to see um, what it is that I need to see. None of the items have changed. I mean, when I went to sleep, I laid down. Um, those items uh, were in uh, the same place. Um, it, they didn't change. I did. My position had changed. And so I have to make some adjustments to be able to see the things that I need to see in my life. Um, and, and I pray that that you um, really understood where I was coming from in the midst of that message. And then the last message is today, um, the subtitle, which is Seeing Beyond Yourself. Seeing Beyond Yourself. Um, in which I'm going to go ahead and dive right into that now. I don't want to hold you long. Normally, communion Sundays are, are, are a little long or the service is quite lengthy. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. That is the foundational scripture um, for today's message. Um, it's a quite familiar scripture in which our brother Paul wrote that uh, as he addressed the Corinthian church. Well, um, I'm glad that he recorded it and documented and documented it and, and we can reflect on this scripture uh, on today. And so let me read the scripture, which is simple is for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Let me pray a prayer uh, because I, I know that I've prayed already, but I want to make sure that I pray a prayer that um, Lord, that you anoint me, that you cover me that I may be able to minister an effective word to your people. Lord, that I may be able to give them a word that may not just tickle their flesh, but a word that will encourage them, a word that will bless them in a way, Lord, that uh, maybe I may not be able to see it, or they may not be able to see it at the time. But Father, I pray that I speak life into situations that need to be resurrected. I speak life into situations, Lord, that um, need to be healed. Lord, I ask that you decrease me, Pastor Emmanuel, and the word and spirit of the living God stands up within me, that I may be able to um, minister on a level in which all can understand. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. And so if we would remember the foundational scriptures, Daryl, you don't have to show them, um, but the foundational scriptures for those people that are following these messages, it is coming through. Um, Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 14 and that is a uh, those scriptures um, they capture a moment in time uh, of restoration um, we know that um, God he divided that book was divided into four different sections condemnation uh, retribution consultation and last but not least restoration there's some of us in our lives uh, we don't have it all together that we need to be restored because we are broken in places where we are crying out for help. And because of that, um, the Lord will um, bring restoration. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't happen as quick as we want it to, but it happens. Um, and, you know, God used the major prophet uh, by the name of Ezekiel to speak into a situation of Israel's captivity. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Ezekiel and his wife, they were uh, two of the 10,000 um, Jews that were in exile, um, you know, at that time. Um, and, and I call it, uh, it, is, it is recorded in the word as the, the uh, Babylonian captivity. Um, and this is a point, uh, This these particular scriptures, this is a point in time where it was a restoration period. It was time for God to make some changes. And so we see where uh, Ezekiel is given the vision. And in that vision, um, we understand that initially 
what Ezekiel saw or what God showed Ezekiel. And, and this blesses me. He showed him a valley of dry bones. And we know um, that it was not a pretty vision. Um, and, uh, you know, if you look, think of a, of, of a valley with dry bones, you think of a place where uh, where uh, bones are scattered um, and things or bones were in disarray. Um, they had been picked over by a beast um, and, you know, it, things just were, uh, it needed to be restored. Some of our lives are broken and we need restoration. And so I pray that we have vision, that God has given us his vision, that our lives will be restored. Uh, but we have to make sure that we are in a place that we can see. And if we can't see, we need to make the adjustments. That goes back to focusing your lens. Make the adjustments so that you are able to see what it is that you need to see or experience what it is, whatever it is that you need to experience. And so looking at today's scriptures, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, um, and these are the scriptures that are with uh, that goes along with the subtitle, um, which is seeing beyond yourself. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Paul reminds the believer that we must be in a place where we have to see beyond um, the day-to-day -day struggles and place our hope in something greater than ourselves. And see, some of us can't recognize or identify the masterpiece that is being created with our lives because we're so wrapped up into ourselves. And so I'm glad Ezekiel submitted to the vision and we're able to follow um, what the, 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 the account of events that happened and that took place um, for Ezekiel to be able to see the, the valley of dry bones to the point to where um, he was able to see the bones come together. Um, because remember now, the bones were scattered. He was able to see the bones come together. And, and after the bones came together, he was able to see the sinew um, and the ligaments um, pull the bones together and uh, resurrect or erect um, the bones to where they were standing upright. And then he was able to see the skin form on the bones. And then he was able to witness the breath being breathed into the bones, um, which are now an actual body, a reconstructed or resurrected body. And he began to see the bones or the bodies be able to move. And so what I like about that is Ezekiel was able to see the different phases of how everything came together. And that's what God does with us. He gives us vision. And he give it to us in parts. He doesn't give it all at one time, because if he gave it all at one time, as I told you all last week, you would miss a step. And anytime your life is unfolding in front of you, you need, need to be able to take an account of how things happen, because that's where the blessing is. You know, I go back to last week when I was speaking about the children of Israel, when they were out in the wilderness, um, they, um, the Lord was taking care of them. And so that's all they wanted. They just wanted to be taken care of. They, there were steps that God was taking to keep them and to sustain them, but they weren't interested in knowing what those steps were. They were just uh, uh, wanting to fast forward to the end and eat the meal, uh, eat the quail, and eat the manna, uh, and, and 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 drink the water, but they missed all of the minute details that was happening in their lives that they, where they just got caught up into walking around and, and in the wilderness from uh, for 40 years you know some of them died off some of them didn't but they um, got caught up into the uh, the mundane uh and, and, and everyday life and that's us where we get up and we 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 go to work uh we 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 do um, we do a, a daily ritual, and we just get caught up in those rituals, and then we forget about uh, what it is that God is doing for us. Every second, every moment we breathe, every moment, every time that we're able to lift our hands and say Hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, uh, we need to be thinking about 
that some of us um, didn't wake up this morning. And so we can't forget about those minute details. Um, if I could get for those people that are, uh, are that are viewing live, if you could type Kingdom Vision uh, in the text, uh, that uh, just to let me know that you are there, um, just type Kingdom Vision. Um, this is a moment in time that if you know if you were in a in-person service, the pastor or the preacher or, or the leader would turn and say, "Turn to your neighbor." Mm -hmm. Well, I'm telling you, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and type Kingdom Vision uh, in the text there. Uh, Amen. And so let me go ahead and get uh, into some of these points right here, because I'm going to make it short and simple and quick and, 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 and get on out of your way. And for those that have uh, want to go back and watch uh, the previous messages within this series, please do. I'm glad it's been documented. We're on multiple platforms. We're on YouTube and Facebook. If you uh, want to go back and watch it, um, the first point here is that. I want to, and it's, it's a familiar point. It's, it's comparison kills. Amen. And, and I want to give credit to the songwriter, Jonathan McReynolds, uh, on, on this because I, as I was listening, I was saying to myself, you know what? Uh, it, it does. Uh, Psalm 139 and verse 14, it says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, meaning uh, God. You are made. You are a workmanship of God's. You are a product of what God has made. And so marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. And so some may be wondering, preacher, how are you tying this into seeing beyond yourself? Because we have to enjoy the masterpiece. We may not uh, understand the art, but just know that it's a great piece. And so uh, we are always quick to uh, compare ourselves uh, to others. And in the process of comparing yourself to others, what you're doing is you are uh, somewhat, um, somewhat you, you're in a, uh, spitting on God, saying, Lord, I, I don't like what you've done. I don't like what you've made. And so that means that you are looking uh, at, at yourself and then you're comparing yourself with others. No, that, don't do that because I believe the songwriter is right when he says comparison kills because what you're doing is you're looking at yourself and you may not be satisfied about where you are in life and that's okay because we are all striving. Uh, most of us anyway, we're striving for greatness. We're striving to be better. But we need to get to a point to where we're seeing beyond ourselves because we don't want to compare ourselves to what others are doing because our standard may not be the standard of the other person. Amen. Uh, we must get to a point to where we are not comparing ourselves. And, and, and I mean, trust me, I, I'm, I'm preaching to myself when it comes to this, because at one point in my life, I, in my preaching life, I was wondering why and is God taking me down um, the path that He's taking me. And I began to look at my some, some of the other preachers and some of the other leaders and say, well, well, Lord, why can't I have what they have? And his response to me is, son, your walk is not their walk. Their walk is not your walk, because it is in your everyday life where there are details where I'm showing you. And that's where your anointing is, because you're able to preach from your own experiences. You're able to teach from your own experiences. And so stop comparing yourself to that preacher. Stop comparing yourself to that preacher. Stop comparing yourself to that ministry and know that I'm working in you. And what I've done with you and what I'm doing with you, you need to be satisfied. Because remember, he's the potter and we're the clay. And so he's shaping our lives. He's shaping us into what he has called us to be. And I know I keep saying that, but I think I probably need to put that on a T-shirt if it's not already on a T-shirt, that he is shaping us into what he has called us to be. And in the process of him calling us into what, uh, uh, calling us and shaping us, there are fine details, things that happen in your life that you just can't overlook because that is where your breakthrough is because you're able to see what God 
has done with you and what he's doing with you and the places that he's taking you, the people that he's allowing you to network with, the people that you're rubbing shoulders with. God is putting you in a place to where you can't compare yourself to others. He's saying, no, if I am the potter, don't worry about this particular product over here or over there. Just know that I'm shaping you. I'm concerned about you. But you got to see beyond yourself. Because it's not just about you. It's about your lineage, your, your legacy. It's about the lineage that's connected to you. It's about the people that are dependent on you. So you got to see beyond you. Stop comparing yourself to others and say, Lord, I may not be satisfied with where I am in life, but I'm satisfied with what you have done with me because I know that, Lord, that you have given me grace and you've given me mercy and you've given me an opportunity to correct some wrongs, to right some wrongs. And so I'm not going to compare myself to others. Now, I, I may I may be in a lane where I am racing or where I'm moving towards my goal and their goal may be similar to mine's, but I'm in my lane. I'm not going to step outside of my lane. I am going to run in the lane. I'm going to run the race, Lord, that you have designed for me. It's my race. And I may get there in my pace but I'm on my pace. I'm not looking over to the, the left lane and to the right lane. Lord, I'm I'm not comparing myself to the to, to the runner in this lane or the runner in that lane. God, I, I'm running my race. I'm running my race because I know, Lord, that at the end of it, that I will be rewarded. But I have to pay attention to the the, the to every detail in my life. I have to pay attention to uh, all of the people that I'm that I'm talking with, do, do they add value to my life? Do they, do they add value to my race? Or are they hindering me? Am I in a place in my life to where I need to hear what they have to say? Are they adding value to me? Is this organization adding value to my life? <laughs> oh my God. Am, am I, am, am I paying attention to, to my surroundings? Uh-huh. Uh, the, the numbers got to, am I hitting the numbers? Am I hitting the mark that you have set for me? Uh-huh. I can't, uh, Lord, this, this, I'm, I'm seeing beyond myself because I understand, Lord, that, that this is greater than me. I, even though I'm running my race, that, uh, that there, there's some, some people in my life, Lord, that, I, that I, I'm, I'm, and I'm a positive impact in their lives. So I'm going to continue to run my race. It blesses me. It blesses me for the Lord to, to be able to show things, show me uh, miracle signs and wonders. And I'm able to to speak, uh, speak to those miracle signs and wonders because I'm I'm, I'm staying in my lane. I'm running my race. <laughs> so don't be so quick to compare yourself to others. Get rid of the comparisons. Be satisfied with your pace, your place. Be satisfied with your place. Ha <laughs> And so my second point here is that God will finish his work. Yes, he'll finish it. Philippians chapter one, verse six, it says, be being confident in this very thing that which hath begun a good work. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes we may feel flawed, but God is not done. The flaws and the imperfections are reminders that, we, that we're that we not perfect and we're human, but know that God, he's not done with us. You know how that, that song that uh, the songwriter that I remember singing growing up, please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. I really do wish that people would understand what they're saying because he, he's not done. But some people say it in a negative way when, they, when they've when they said or done some things and they give an excuse and they say, well, yeah, you know, God, he ain't done with me yet. So that gives me the license to do what I do. But understand that we're all flawed. 
and, and God is not done with us. But remember now, according to the scriptures, it says that he, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so if you are looking at yourself and you see that you are in an imperfected state, if you see that you are flawed and you, you know that you're flawed and, 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 but I want you to know that you may be flawed. Those flaws are what, uh, are what make you. Those imperfections, they're what make you. And, and, and in those imperfections, God knows about those imperfections, but he wants you to get to a point to where you know without a shadow of a doubt that he's your maker. And because he's your maker, you'll be fine. You'll be OK, because once you begin to find your purpose and once you begin to move and operate under the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's when God will begin to move in your life. So you actually he's already moving. That's when you begin to recognize and identify him moving in your life. And you say, Lord, you know what? I, I messed up there. And I and I know what you were doing to me. I, I may not have known before, but now I know what you're doing with me, God. And I, and I know that I was, it was at a point to where that you weren't through with me and you weren't done with me, but I trust you enough to know that you're giving me the kingdom vision to know that, that there's more, uh, that there's more in store that I, that I'm not, that you're not done with me, uh, that Lord, that you are blessing me because I'm in a place, Lord, that where, where I'm undone, I, I'm undone because you're still working on me. And as you're working on me, I'm, I'm understanding who I am. I'm understand. I'm understanding my purpose. Uh huh. I'm understanding God that you are developing me. And that 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 you are that you began your work, and that you are not a man. That that you that that, that you just leave things undone. You know when you go to that mechanic, and and the mechanic he, he they do a half job. And it's just to keep you coming back for more and more and more. God is not like that. He, even even when he's not done with you, he, he he's not doing a half job. It, it's just that as he develops you and work on you, you learn more and more about yourself. And so, you know, you begin to understand your breaking point. God already knows what your breaking point is. And so uh, and then you as you begin to understand your purpose, you begin to know and you begin to coming to a realization as to what your breaking points are. Mm -hmm. And again, God knows your breaking points. He wants you to know what they are. But just know that he that have begun a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We are all flawed. We are all human. But you got to get to a point to where you see beyond yourself. You say, Lord, you, I, I, I'm not, I'm no longer going to be selfish. I'm no longer going to uh, allow these flaws to hold me down. I'm not, I'm no longer going to allow these flaws to, to anchor me down and, 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 and keep me in this stagnant state. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that that Lord, that I'm, I'm looking at these flaws and understand that you have begun to work in me, and you, and, and you, and it's just like uh, now I'm moving on to, you know, if you've seen those people that when they chisel, when they they chip away at at, at and create this this wood figure, they they have this this mallet and this chisel and they're chipping it away. God is chipping those flaws away from you, and they are there. But if he never chipped them, you wouldn't know they were there. And so he's chipping those flaws. He's he's knocking them off. And as he knock them off, you say, oh, God, that, was that me? Uh, yeah, I, Lord, I, I thank you for taking it off of me because I now see what's wrong in my life. And so, God, I'm now doing a self-evaluation. And so I'm not welcoming the flaws. I'm welcoming the chiseling that you're doing. I'm welcoming, I'm welcoming the pruning. Um, that you are doing in my life because I understand God that I have to see beyond myself because I know that there are others that are connected and attached to me that God I'm going to get this right 
I may have messed up before, but I'm going to get this right. I'm going to correct this wrong. I now I see where I'm sticking out like a sore thumb, where I'm trying to hide. And just like Adam and Eve, as they tried to hide, it, the Lord found them. As a matter of fact, he didn't find them. He already knew where they were because when somebody finds you, that means they don't know where you are. But God knew exactly where they were, um, even when they tried to cover themselves in the, the animal skins and the furs and, and, and all that kind of stuff. God knew exactly where they were the entire time. But they, the thing is, they came to a realization that they were naked. And God say, God asked them, who told you that you was naked? And so God is saying, who told you you were naked? You got to get to a point to where you say, Lord, you know what? I know uh, that you will finish what you started in me. I have kingdom vision. I see where I was once before. I see where I'm going. I see who's pro me, meaning who's for me. I understand in my darkest moments, moments of disappointment, I see who I am. And I know who I need to work on. I know what I need to work on. Is that you? Tell me there's somebody out there that see it as well in themselves to where they, they have done a self-evaluation, self-reflection. And they see where they're undone. And they're waiting on God to complete them. Because according to the scriptures, it says being confident in this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Pastor Carl, I'm done. Straight to the point, I'm done. Let me pray a prayer of forgiveness. Romans chapter 10, verses nine through 13. Because that's what this is all about. I pray that this series inspired you. I'm a little reserved today. I know I am. But I wanted you to get this. I wanted you to hear this. For the Bible says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if that's you, if that's you, ask God to forgive you right now. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, ask him to forgive you. Repent. If you do know him, but you're in the pardon of your sins and you are in a backslidden state, meaning you have fallen from grace. Ask God to forgive you right now. Both are sinners. Those that don't know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, those that do but have fallen from grace, both are sinners. And you can ask God to forgive you right now. If that's you, repeat after me. Father Lord, I am a sinner. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you wipe my slate clean. Father, I pray, Lord, that you search my heart and know and see that I have a repentance heart, meaning I am turning from my wicked ways. I believe Jesus is the son of God. And I believe that he died. He was murdered, crucified and rose on the third day. I ask God that you come into my heart. Forgive me. I believe that Jesus is your son. 
I believe that he walked this earth and gave me an example Amen. Now, if that's you and you are in need of spiritual counseling, please fill out that form, that online connect form. Complete it. Someone within church leadership will connect with you. If you're in need of prayer, Fill out that online connect form. Brother Darrell already uh, spoke of it. More than likely, it is posted uh, within or at the top of the, the, um, the message. Just click on that. It's an online Google form. Uh, complete it. Um, and it will come right to church leadership and someone will connect with you. So... Um, Pastor Carl, I turn it over to you. All right. Amen, amen, amen. We thank and praise God for each and every person who has decided to join us today here at Renew Covenant Christian Center. We have a mission to further develop and establish a relationship between God and his people. Amen. To provide a vision um, that provides a job resource center that will provide assistance with resume building, interviewing skills and assist with benefit selection. To provide a financial counseling center that will assist with financial planning, budget analysis, tax preparation, credit repair, medical bill, health insurance, interpretation and home buying assistance. To provide a life development center that will provide marital and family therapy and a 24 hour prayer line. The order of our services are as follows. We meet for Sunday morning work up on three platforms as my uh, cousin, our uh, midi ministry lead, uh, Daryl Styles Jr. has so eloquently stated, we meet on these platforms, YouTube and Facebook. On our YouTube channel, it's the RC3 Media Ministry, RC3 Media Ministry. Please make sure that you are subscribing to this channel as well as liking this uh, page and sharing the links. This allows us to have the ability to um, go places that we would not normally be able to go if we were in the four walls of the church. This virtual space gives us an opportunity to kind of uh, go beyond boundaries, as you will. So please make sure that you are sharing this information. Again, click the bell notification so that way you get the notification when we're live streaming and when the videos have been uploaded. Amen. The other two platforms are Facebook, our RC3 private page, as well as our Renewed Covenant Christian Center page. Please make sure you are liking these pages. Post them to your wall and connect them. <laughs> we got devices going off in here. <laughs> connect them um, with your family members, your circle uh, of friends. Please make sure that you are sharing this information again. This gives us an opportunity to share the track that we used to share back in the 90s and the 80s. Share that track because someone just may need what is being spoken, what's being taught during that time. And again, it could be Pastor and I speaking or it could be some one of our guests, uh, ministers or pastors that are speaking. Share the message because, again, we need this gospel to go further than we can go with our two feet. Amen. The other services that we have Wednesday, we meet for training or for reigning word on Wednesday, Bible study, training for warning, reigning word on Wednesday, Bible study at eight o'clock. This is where we meet on our Google Meets platform. It's an interactive platform. It's not like this set up here where you just kind of see us. We're speaking to you and you come in on the side. No, we are having an interaction discussion, rightly dividing the word of God amongst each other, have an opportunity to ask questions and have discussion. Bible study gives us an opportunity to show that salvation is not what you give up to serve Christ, but what you gain to serve Christ. If you do not participate in Bible study, you have no idea what you gain in serving Christ. It does feel like you are losing out on certain things if you are surrendering one lifestyle for another. There tends to be a growing pain and a sense of loss. The only way that you can recuperate in this um, in this 
the space is to go to Bible study. When you go to Bible study, you see that you have an opportunity to gain, not lose, that there is an exchange. And sometimes the exchange is an uneven exchange because what you exchange to God for what he's going to give you is far more greater than what you think you're giving up. But you never have that opportunity until you get into your word with Bible study. Bible study affords us that space. To show the gain versus the law, loss. Amen. It's a profit. When you are going into a servitude of Christ, you resist, uh, yield profits. It is gain. And God had been dealing with me about this, um, teaching people that salvation is not about loss. It's about gain. Amen. Again, Bible study is the only space that affords us that opportunity to do so. So please join us for Bible study on our Google Meets platform. If you need to get connected with the ministry, please use that online connect form. This allows us to give you the information that you need to either get connected um, with band so that way you receive the uh, announcements concerning Bible study and the other services, but also the connect form allows us to give you an opportunity to interact with you. So that way we can give you the platform information for Bible study if you decide to participate. We look forward to anyone who decides to join us on the upcoming week. Every fourth Friday of the month, we have evangelistic night, one of our favorite times of the month, because this is an opportunity where we allow our ministers in training as well as our peers in the gospel to speak a word to our C3 ministry. And of course, all of you who participate in our virtual space, we love hearing those preach and teach the gospel and kind of have a seat for ourselves to be replenished by those who are teaching instead of us. It gives us an opportunity to soak up God's word from a different vessel as well. So please join us for Evangelistic Night every fourth Friday at 8 p.m. Our speaker for August is still to be determined, but we thank and praise God for each and every person who has participated thus far, for they have truly been a blessing and spoken a word into the ministry and those who have decided to watch with us. On August the 20th, uh, Pastor would be speaking um, at, at Holy Transformation Ministry. My good friend Shamika Garner and her husband, no? Holy Transformation, that's the boroughs. That's the boroughs. Yeah, virtually. That's a uh, pass. My apologies. Holy trans. Are you going to be at or is it going to be virtual? Virtual. Okay. So this is going to be a virtual space. So, but I think this is for brothers, right? Didn't you say uh, yeah. brothers empowerment? Yeah. I'm going to let you speak on that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but on um, September the 18th, um, we have a pastor is going to be speaking at Forward Worship Church, Forward Worship Church. And this is my good friend, Shamika Gardner and her husband, Rich Gardner. That's going to be an in-person event. So pastor will be going to that church to speak at 4 p.m. at 4 p.m. So if you have an opportunity to travel with him and do so, please let us know. So that way we can communicate that information to you. If not, I'm not sure if they're going to have a space for us to view um, that the view of the service, but I'll be getting in contact with the, the pastors, uh, Shamika and Rich, to see if there will be a virtual opportunity to tap in and support pastor in this way. Pastor, I'm going to have you go ahead and speak about the Holy Transformation Ministry for your brothers. Uh, yes, yeah, a brother empowerment on August 20th at noon. They have, I believe they have a YouTube and Facebook platform. So they've asked me to um, speak uh, on that that day at noon in the virtual space. And um, I do know that this is a bro brother empower brother empowerment service. I'm trying to see if I can get a topic that I've been asked to speak on. Uh, bear with me just for one moment. It says um the topic is men stand up and um, come up and out of the shadows. That's what uh, I've been asked to speak on. 
And so that I'm pretty sure that it'll be a blessing um, on that day. Um, I'll make sure that if we have any details to provide, that we will do that at a later time. But other than that, those are the only two speaking engagements that I can speak of right now. Um, I do know that there's also another engagement on September 24th. Uh, we don't have details, and I don't think it's been confirmed yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, there's some other activity that we may be involved with, and we get more information. We'll make sure that we share that with you. But thank you. All right. So those are the, the, the speaking engagements. Anytime that you have an opportunity to support Pastor and I in these efforts, please do so. We do appreciate your support in that. If you would like to give, please do so um, by using these two platforms. Each and every person that has faithfully sown their tithes and offering, we thank you for that. It allows us to assist and be a community resource for those who are experiencing disparities with food, shelter, as well as access to education. Food, shelter, as well as access to education allows us to be a beacon of light in our community in these particular spaces. Um, if you would like to give, please do so by using these two platforms. The first platform is our cash app application platform, cash app, and our handle is dollar sign renew three. Again, dollar sign renew three. The second platform is Venmo, Venmo, and the handle for that is renew three, renew three. Again, thank you for being a seed sower into this ministry. It allows us to, again, to be that beacon of light in our community, but also prepare for a space to do worship as God is lending us this vision. And see how I say lending us this vision? Because really it's his vision. And when you are dealing with a, a almighty, you, you understand that what he gives to you is lend unto you. And he gives according to how much he can trust you to steward over. And so... Thank you for allowing us to be good stewards of what God has blessed us with and supporting us and serving with us. Know that you are serving with us and we do not count it um, for granted. Thank you for doing that. Um, anything else that you wanted to? Oh, if you wanted to, there are one more thing. Scroll the address one more time because I forgot to mention that. If you wanted to send something, any type of communication or if you wanted to send your offering, you can do so by uh, sending it to RC3 PO Box 162, Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina, 27526. Again, RC3 PO Box 162, Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina, 27526. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Yes, I want to make sure that I add. I forgot to um, give my niece, Michaela, a shout out that she... Um, she's actually transferring from North Carolina a and uh, this upcoming fall semester, and she'll be attending NCCU. You know, that's the real HBCU. Well, 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 go ahead. I'll go ahead and leave that long. I'll leave that long. <laughs> yeah, but I, I made mention of three others last week, but I forgot to mention her name. So if for those that want to sew into her, um, please, um, if you could, um, if you want to, you could send a offering um, uh, via Cash App or Venmo and just uh, indicate in the comment section that, that you would like for this offering to be allocated towards Michaela Evans. Or you could actually send something um, to the P.O. Box 62. Um, if you wanted to send it to her, we would make sure that it got to her for she is an upcoming uh, sophomore um, this year at um, NCCU. So there are a total of four college students, actually more than that, because I think, <laughs> um, I believe Kay, she's actually a college student as well. I forgot her, um, what she's going to school for, but um, Kay Holder Welch, she's actually a student as well. And we claim um, Fiona as, as one of ours as well. I think she's a student as well. Um, so I thank God for, for them and the, continuing their education. Um, it's certainly a blessing. So we understand that education is key to um, fighting poverty. Education is key to fighting a whole lot of negative uh, negativity out, out there. So continue to press forward. 
And we want to say education on all levels. So that means spiritual as well as uh, progressing in your uh uh, professional careers as well. We promote education on all levels. And that's why we talk about participating in Bible study and things like that, because anytime that you can acquire knowledge to, like uh, Pastor was saying, that's what we were talking about in Bible study. It makes poverty have to stand back because you're acquiring knowledge to make it um, stand back and be broken. Because once you acquire more knowledge, that knowledge pretty much tells poverty, okay, I can no longer live in this space. And what space is that? In your mind, because it starts here. It starts here. When poverty can no longer live in your mind, guess what? The space around you, surrounding you, has to line up to what you're emitting from you, what's coming from you. Amen? So we're big promote, uh, promoters of education, be it spiritual or, again, in professional development as well. All right. Well, these are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. If there's nothing else to hold our attention, Pastor, I'll turn it back over to you so you can pray um, and dismiss us. Pray oh, you're right. I didn't pray over the offering. Let me go ahead and pray over the offering. And Pastor, because he don't like it when I don't pray for him. <laughs> Father God, we do thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Father, we ask that you continue to give seed to every sower, Lord God. Father, we thank you that it goes into good ground, Lord Jesus. Allow it to be dispersed, Lord God. Dispersed, Lord God, and properly allocated as you see fit. Father, we thank you for it is for the upkeep and uplift of your kingdom, God. Father, we ask that you rebuke the devourer for your name's sake and that you will restore to each and every sower, Lord God, 100 fold. Father, we thank you right now that if there have been seeds that have been named, Father, that you will manifest it not too many days past, God. Father, we thank you right now that as people continue to open their hands to give, that you will restore and put back in their hands to reap, God. Father, we thank you for our pastor. We ask that you continue to anoint and bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Father, endowing him with creative concepts and ideas only coming from you. Father, we, as he continues to follow you, we will continue to follow him as he continues to preach and teach the gospel with life application teaching. Lord God, Father, we thank you right now that you will um, allow the rebuke, the devour for his name's sake, Lord God, but also give him protection, guidance covering lord god father that you will continue to allow the ministry and angels um to be encamped about him as he is going forth and ministering the gospel lord god allowing provision to be provided into his home father we thank you right now lord jesus that you will continue to give him the ideas that will move and push the vision that you have lent to us father please be pleased with our worship please be pleased with our efforts in building your kingdom father we do thank you we praise you we ask all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer um, and all of the announcements. I know it was right much, but we have a lot of announcements. We are a ministry on a move. Um, let me make sure that I reiterate that, uh, that we make sure that we understand kingdom vision um, this series, uh, as I stated, and I've gotten some good feedback um, from from people um, on the messages, and I pray that uh, it blessed you. And that if you are in need and want to understand what Kingdom Vision is all about, based upon the messages, please just go back and and watch at your convenience. Um, who knows what the Lord is going to do next concerning the messages that I, the message for the next message that I preach. I know that um, the way that the Lord deals with me, he deals with me first. I am the far, first partaker of the word. And so, um, you know, I, 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 there's no telling what what's going to go forth next. And so if you um, without further ado, you would just repeat after me and we'd be dismissed now to him. Now to him. Who's able to keep you? Who's able to keep you? And me from falling. And me from falling. Consider yourselves just missed. God bless you.